Hi, this is Dr. Stanley Kim again, the hematologist in Claremont, California. I'd like to discuss ITP treatment now. Traditionally, we have been using corticosteroids such as prednisone, and the majority of patients respond very well. But when you stop the prednisone, the platelet counts go down. Then we send the patient to a surgeon to have their spleen removed because the spleen is the place where the platelets are destroyed but it doesn't guarantee in 100%. Now we have a much more options with the newly developed drugs. Let's discuss more in detail and thank you for watching. The goal of therapy is not to raise the platelet count to normal level, but to reduce the risk of bleeding. We like to raise the platelet counts to 50,000 or above. American Society of Hematology recommend no treatment, just simple observation when the new patients present with the platelet counts over 30,000 and when they have no bleeding or may have a minor skin bleeding. But when the platelet counts are uh, below 30,000, treatment with a corticosteroid is advised. Do we have to admit all new ITP patients? No, only when the platelet counts are less than 20,000. When the platelet counts over 20,000, our patient management is sufficient. We need to advise patients to avoid drugs that increase the risk of bleeding, like aspirin, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like Advil, Aleve, anticoagulants, or antiplatelets like Plavix. Celebrex uh, have a less bleeding uh, side effect. As the first-line therapy, we almost always use the glucocorticoids like prednisone or dexamethasone. IVIG, intravenous immunoglobulin, is useful in case of emergency because it works quite quickly. Anti-D raw immune globulin can be used for Rh-positive blood type patients who still have the spleen. Second-line therapy includes splenectomy, the traditional uh, surgical therapy. Rituximab is the uh, anti-B lymphocytes. You know, the B lymphocytes are differentiated to plasma cells producing autoantibodies. Thrombopoietin receptor agonists increase the platelet uh, air production. Uh, three drugs available, Romiplostim, l thrombopec and Abatrombopec. Uh, new drug, Fostamatinib, is used for the refractory ITP. It's a spleen tyrosine kinase inhibitor. Miscellaneous therapy include the Danazol, the androgen hormone, azathioprine, vincristine, or even vitamin C. Platelet transfusion is useful in case of acute serious bleeding or uh, before uh, urgent surgery. Corticosteroid is the most important first-line ITP therapy. We use either prednisone or dexamethasone. Prednisones are given 1 mg per kg per day, usually 60 mg for a few weeks until the platelets rise above 100,000, then taper it off over several weeks. We don't want to use over 60 weeks because of the toxicity from long-term steroid usage. Dexamethasones are given at high dose at 40 mg a day for four consecutive days only without taper. It can be uh, repeated once. What's the difference? The uh, dexamethasone post-therapy brought faster and the higher re initial response rate and the fewer bleeding episodes and the less side effects. But there is no difference in overall long-term sustained response, which is about 20 to 30%. In other words, 80% of patients uh, the platelet counts drop back down to the baseline when they stop those uh, prednisone or dexamethasone. IVIG, intravenous immunoglobulin, is quite uh, useful in case of emergency because it gives the quick response in one to two days, but lasts for three to five weeks only. So we have to give it repeatedly uh, every month or so. We give one gram per kg per, uh, per one day uh, every uh, month, month or so. How it works? Infused immunoglobulin binds the FT, FC receptors on the surface of macrophage in the spleen, sparing the uh, platelet uh, coated with the autoantibodies from destruction by macrophage. It's quite expensive, can give side effects like a headache, chills. It rarely causes anaphylaxis. Because IVIG frequently contains hepatitis B's core antibody, uh, patients can have a falsely positive uh, hepatitis B serology after IVIG infusion. So uh, the test needs to be done before IVIG infusion. 
rho D immunoglobulin is also called anti D immunoglobulin. Rh positive blood type's main antigen is a D antigen. When the anti D immunoglobulins are infused, they bind the D antigen on the surface of Rh positive red blood cells. Those red blood cells coated with the anti D immunoglobulin binds the FC receptors on the surface of macrophage in the spleen. So the platelet coated with the autoantibodies are spared from destruction by macrophage. So the patients must have a Rh positive blood type and the intact spleen for the uh, a, a raw D treatment. This has been used to prevent alloimmunization during pregnancy when the Rh negative mother conceived Rh positive fetus. It gives a pretty good initial response but doesn't last that long. Because the red blood cells are destroyed instead of platelets, it almost always caused the hemolytic anemia to a certain extent. When the anti-D immunoglobulins are infused, uh, you, a patient must have a Rh negative blood products in order to avoid the uh, hemolysis uh, interaction between the anti-D immunoglobulin and the uh, Rh uh, positive blood. Splenectomy is the important uh, second line surgical therapy. Removing the major place of platelet destruction, which is spleen, provides the sustained platelet response in 80 to 90% of patients. The spleen is important in the immune defense uh, with the complement system. So splenectomy uh, causes increased risk of uh, infection due to lack of splenic phagocytosis of capsular bacteria, especially with the uh, uh, pneumococcus, H. influenza, meningococcus, uh, Klebsiella. So patients must have vaccination uh, before splenectomy. Whenever patients have some signs of infection, we have to give antibiotics immediately uh, with amoxicillin. When they are allergic to penicillin, cephalosporin, levofloxacin, uh, azithromycin can be used. I like to show the interesting Howell Jolly body. Howell Jolly body is the DNA remnant in the RBCs. Normally, uh, Howell Jolly body RBCs are uh, destroyed by the uh, macrophage in the spleen, but after the splenectomy, you start to see the uh, Howell Jolly body in the purple smear. But when you see no Howell Jolly body after uh, splenectomy, you wonder patients may have accessory spleen. Rituximab with a brand name Rituxan is an anti CD20 monoclonal antibody against the B lymphocytes. Look at this picture. The infused rituximab binds the CD20 receptors on the surface of B lymphocytes, leading to its regression and the death. So the rituximab uh, blocked the B lymphocyte, produced the autoantibody. So the platelet counts increases. American Society of Hematology recommends uh, rituximab uh, over the uh, splenectomy as a second line therapy. We give a weekly for four consecutive weeks, can be repeated several times. It gives a 60% initial response rate occurring in five to six weeks, but the sustained response rate is only about 20%. Uh, because rituximab can reactivate hepatitis B infection, patients must have a hepatitis B surface antigen, hepatitis B core antibody IgG IgM uh, checked before the therapy. Thrombopoietin is the growth factor for platelet production. Then why don't we use the thrombopoietin to raise the platelet uh, counts? Yes, we have used this uh, the thrombopoietin but failed. The thrombopoietin uh, induced the formation of autoantibody against the thrombopoietin and the platelet counts got worsened. So the research scientists discovered the uh, uh, thrombopoietin mimetics, uh, which is the uh, thrombopoietin receptor agonist. There are three, uh, kind, uh, th three drugs, romiplostim, L-thrombopeg, abatrombopeg. Normally, uh, thrombopoietin binds the uh, thrombopoietin receptors on the surface of megakaryocyte or megakaryocyte progenitor cells, uh, activating JAK2 STAT5 pathways leading to megakaryocyte maturation and proliferation uh, and increase the platelet production. Romiplostin is the uh, uh, peptide. It actually binds the uh, 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 TPO receptors 
and activate the JAK2 start 5 pathways. But the l thrombopec and the aba thrombopecs are not peptide. It's a non-peptide small molecule. It incorporates into the cell membrane of the megakaryocytes or megakaryocyte progenitor cells, activating JAK2 start 5 pathways, uh, eventually uh, leading to megakaryocyte maturation prolifer proliferation and the raise the uh, uh, platelet counts. TPO receptor agonists are emerging new uh, second line therapy. It's effective in 50 to 90 percent of patients depending on the drugs. Once you start the treatment, platelet counts rise in one to two weeks, but it goes down uh, in two weeks after drug was discontinued, sometimes to the uh, lower than baseline level, which is called the rebound phenomenon. Luckily, in 20 to 30 percent of patients, the platelet response sustained even after the drug were, drugs were discontinued. It's useful to raise the platelet counts before surgical procedures. For example, abat thrombopec was used for only five days to raise the platelet counts before the uh, surgery. Romiplostim and the l thrombopec abat thrombopec have no cross-drug resistance. In other words, when the patients uh, uh, don't respond to one uh, drug, they can switch over to the other because there are differences in their uh, drug structure as described in the previous slide. Side effects include too many platelets and uh, venous thrombosis. American Society of Hematology recently recommended uh, the uh, uh, TPO receptor agonist over the rituximab uh, or splenectomy uh, as a second line therapy. Three drugs available, lomiflostin uh, with a brand name and plate, it was gi it's given subcutaneous infection uh, weekly. l thrombopec promocta is given by mouth every day. Aba thrombopec uh, doptalet is the same uh, oral medication. I like to mention about l thrombopec promocta because we have a much more clinical data. It's a highly effective with 80 to 90 percent response rate. Uh, it has a hepatotoxicity, so the liver function test has to be checked frequently every two weeks or every month initially for the first one, one year. Agents need to reduce the dosage because of their delayed drug clearance. It has to be taken in empty stomach due to interaction with the minerals in foods. It has interaction with the rosbastatin, the Cresto. It increases the uh, 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 toxicity uh, when it takes together. However, abatrombopec has no significant hepatotoxicity. Uh, there is no need to adjust the dosage for Asians, no food restriction. However, the clinical data of these abatrombopecs are limited, so we have to uh, uh, see how it goes. When the disease becomes refractory to all the uh, treatment, uh, we have uh, limited options. But we have a new medicine, uh, fostamatinib. It is an inhibitor of spleen tyrosine kinase by the name of SYK. It reduces the phagocytosis of antibody-coated platelets. But response rate is not as high like other drugs because the patient's already been through all kind of second-line therapy. Danazole is an androgen hormone. It sometimes shows the response in elderly uh, response and good to use in elderly patient. Immunosuppressant chemotherapy drug vincristine has been used. Uh, vitamin C sometimes uh, uh, in, induce some response. It's a kind of anecdotal, uh, but it's so benign, so I often use this vitamin C therapy. Thank you for watching.